The mechanisms of katsu training are as follows. There are two main uh, local stimuli or mechanisms of adaptation and there is one systemic uh, mechanism or response to katsu training. Uh, the local mechanisms, the first one is a uh, dilation and um, impedance of the, of the circulation in and out of the extremity and that in itself uh, causes venous distension and then when cuffs are deflated or muscles are contracted causes venous emptying and this deflation and distension of the venous side uh, has been shown to result in a release of vascular endothelial growth factor VEGF and uh, uh, this in turn is part of the cascade of increasing angiogenesis or uh, new capillary uh, development and perhaps uh, improvement of uh, uh, the venous system or the whole circulatory system. Then given that this circulation is impeded and then the uh, client is asked to do simple exercises, these simple exercises become unsustainable because they are not giving the blood flow, given the blood flow that they typically need and use to uh, sustain this level of exercise. So what happens is the PO2 in the tissue drops, the pH in the tissue drops, um, various metabolites are not cleared, um, and uh, the, uh, ultimately the tissue runs out of uh, intracellular phosphates, and this has a consequence of impairing a lot of electrolyte uh, uh, gradients in terms of uh, ATP dependent calcium uh, pumps as well as uh, maintaining uh, electrolyte gradients across uh, membranes for potassium and sodium. Uh, all of these things can be characterized as a disturbance of homeostasis in the active muscle. And this homeostasis, disturbance of homeostasis, is then communicated to the CNS via group 3 and 4 afferents and uh, uh, goes up the spinal cord and synapses in primarily the thalamus from which there is a lot of uh, irradiation of this neural traffic. Some of this neural traffic goes to the sensory cortex where one becomes aware there is a profound disturbance of homeostasis um, in, in the active muscle. And uh, other places this goes are to the cardiovascular control centers and the respiratory control centers uh, which end up stimulating breathing and stimulating heart rate and a mild stimulation of uh, uh, blood pressure. Uh, then in addition and as part of that response there's a um, connection to the uh, autonomic nervous system centers and there's an increase in sympathetic tone uh, that's associated with this disturbance of homeostasis in the active muscle beds. Um, in addition in these active muscle beds is as the disturbance of homeostasis becomes more and more profound in the fibers that are first recruited for this, those fibers drop out and other fibers uh, are recruited to take over this work. But they similarly get in trouble the same way and so in, a, in this way with very simple and lightweight katsu exercises we can recruit fibers of all fiber types and uh, of, all, of all kinds of uh, thicknesses of motor neurons so that we can completely exhaust the whole muscle. Now, one of the other things that happens uh, when we have this uh, afferent nerve activity going up into the CNS is that one of the uh, synapses is into the hypothalamus, uh, series of synapses is into the hypothalamus where this initiates a healing slash antibiotic valic cascade. Uh, this has been documented by increases in uh, growth hormone output out of the pituitary and uh, that are very brisk. Uh, following uh, 10, to 10 to 20 to 30 minutes following a uh, proper katsu workout. And uh, this, is, this is one marker of this anabolic response. And so this systemic hormonal uh, anabolic healing response that's coming out of the, of the CNS is going everywhere uh, throughout the body. And any tissues that, whether they by from exercising or from needing to be healed, they are able to take up these hormones, and these hormones then um, 
upregulate various processes that are associated with uh, protein synthesis and healing and repair of uh, damaged tissues. Now, the key here is that normally it takes damage to these muscles to get these kind of responses. One can do a maximal weightlifting session with two hours with very heavy weights and get similar autonomic and hormonal responses out of the CNS. But the difference here with Katsu is that the actual work done was very little and did not damage the working muscle. And so instead of having to dig oneself out of a hole and rebuild all this uh, damage, uh, the, the body can just start from right from the get-go and uh, improve uh, function and structure in these, in these exercising tissues. And this goes for not only muscles that have been distal to the bands and had their blood flow impeded, but also goes for other muscles that have been working in the course of this uh, exercise.